Hello everyone and welcome back to the Coin Housewife YouTube channel. Well today I am happy and excited to be showing you how I make my easy no yeast homemade pizza. And I really like to make this because I don't have to order out, I don't have to pay a tip, I don't have to pay taxes, you know, for an order out pizza and it, I believe, saves money. So let's get started on this pizza. I'm going to make it from start to finish with you here today. The pizza I make today, I'm going to top with ingredients that are left in my refrigerator that have to be used up. Let's start measuring our flour. I am going to need two cups of all-purpose flour. You can make this half white, half whole wheat if you want. Here we go, that's one cup of flour. And two cups of flour. All right, next, I'm going to need some baking powder here. It is two teaspoons of baking powder. One. And two. And finally, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Just mix all this together. Now add about three quarters of a cup of water. You can see I have flour on me already. <laughs> and mix that all together. You know, I better take off my rings before I forget. Already probably going to get some flour on them now. Get those out of the way. Don't want to, don't want to get those lost in the pizza dough and then end up baking it in. Don't want anybody biting on that. But more than that, I don't want to lose my rings. Okay, so see the dough is getting clumpy here. So now we are going to start working with our hands. We are not going to use a rolling pin today either. We're going to press this right into the pan, but I have just a couple of things I do to the pan beforehand to make this pizza taste even better. A little pizza parlor trick. So you can see here I have a solid piece of dough. Now the moisture level of your dough should feel about to be the moisture level of play dough, not too wet and not too dry. And anytime you're making a bakery item out of dough, that usually is a good gauge for, uh, for your dough turning out right when it's baked. So now what we are going to do is cut our dough into four pieces. So I have a dough blade right here. You can use a knife or a spatula, whatever you have handy. And just try to make four even pieces out of that. I'm going to clean up this flour off the stove and be right back with you. So I have a half of a medium to large size onion here sliced up. I have about a half of green bell pepper that I had left, and here I have about a cup of chicken breast that I, you know, just snipped up, and there's little pieces of skin in there too, but oh well. So it's going to be a uh, chicken pizza with vegetables, and of course we have our red sauce and mozzarella cheese and some herbs and spices. Now, if you don't have your oven preheated to 425 degrees, go ahead and do that. I've got an old cookie sheet here. Uh, before I get the dough pressed down onto the cookie sheet, I'm going to be taking some butter, cold from the refrigerator. And I am going to swipe that all along the bottom of the cookie sheet. So here, like this in long strokes like that. Rub the butter along there. So now that the butter is all over the pan, we're going to use a little pizza parlor trick 
for making this pizza seem a little more authentic even though you're not using yeast. So what we are going to use is cornmeal. If you ever you know, ordered pizza from your favorite delivery place or went to your favorite pizza restaurant, you might notice that the bottom of the pizza has a slight grit to it, but that is something that a lot of professional pizza parlors do. They put cornmeal at the bottom of the pizza dough to get that extra little texture, to get that grit. And it might sound a little funny, but once you try this, you might find you always do it. Okay, just put a little bit in the lid and take your fingers, your clean fingers, and just sprinkle along the bottom of the pan, above the butter. <clears throat> all right, so your pizza pan should look something like this with the cornmeal sprinkled all over it. Now after that, we take a section of our dough, so take one of the four pieces and separate it. So what we're going to do is flatten each quarter of the dough out onto one quarter of this pan so that it's easier to flatten with your hands. So it's all going, the dough is going to all be connected together in one pie, but you're just going to manage it with your hands one quarter at a time, okay? So now, just start pressing this as flat as you can with your fingers, the one quarter of the dough, like this, okay? Just press it with your fingers and keep going in a circle. And you're going to see that the center flattens out and then as you go towards the edges, the edges are going to flatten out and the dough is, the dough piece is going to enlarge slowly as you go like that. So you can see that as it's in my hands, it's getting larger. Now, once you have it to a size maybe where it's a little harder to manage with your hands, you're going to press that into the pan and finish flattening it to the size of the pan while it's down right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is do a final stretch of this dough like this, both ways, both ways. So like this. And then I'm going to take the dough and lay it on that one-fourth of the pan right here. And then finish pressing it down into the pan. And it's okay if the cornmeal and the butter shifts underneath it. That's fine. Those ingredients aren't going anywhere. All right. Now we're going to take the next fourth of the dough and we're going to do that for each quadrant of this cookie sheet. Now you're going to find the pieces aren't perfect looking but after you have them together you're going to start connecting those pieces. Now if you wanted you could use a rolling pin. I've said in other videos of mine I really hate using rolling pins and I would rather just do this with my hands. I find especially when my kitchen is a mess and I don't have a lot of counter space to be using a rolling pin, this is also a good technique to be using. All right, I'm about to put the last quarter piece of dough into the pan and then I'm going to pinch the seams together to make the dough more like one piece on the pan. All right, so here we go. It's the last stretch this way and last stretch this way. Okay. So the way I just placed it down 
is there's still a little space between the dough pieces but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that dough flatten it out on the sheet a little bit like this between the pieces of dough like that and that helps seal the seams all right so I have the seams closed see if hopefully you can see this hopefully there's the glare is not too strong I have the seams closed on all four pieces of dough and now I've got uh, one piece of pizza dough ready for the toppings. So let's get started on that. I have like half a jar of pasta sauce here, the red sauce that is waiting to be used. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red brush here and I'm going to brush the pasta sauce on. This is the amount of sauce that I have on the raw dough. This pizza is going to have about two cups of shredded mozzarella cheese total over it. I would say I have about a quarter of a jar of pasta sauce on it, half of a medium to large size onion. Occasionally I'll have a, a little can of anchovies I get in the house because almost any pizza parlor I go to or have been to in the last 10 years has not had anchovies. Now it is time for the green pepper. So you see this is starting to come together. We started from scratch but it's coming together. This was a half of a large green bell pepper that I had left that I wanted to use up. And we have about a cup of chicken breast here. And this is going over the top here. All right, that's what I've got. Now I'm just gonna put my herbs and spices on. And there's one, one more little thing I like to do sometimes on pizza to make it more like authentic pizza parlor. And that's just a drizzle, a tiny bit of olive oil on top. So I think I'll do that too. I'm just going to fill this cap here with olive oil, and that's that's all the olive oil I'm going to use. Woo! Don't fall out. Don't don't spill. <laughs> don't spill on me. All right. Some nice rich olive oil on top here. And then I'm going to put some herbs and spices on. My, my husband's going to be horrified when he sees the mess in the kitchen, but uh, he knows I'm making a YouTube video. I think he's happy that there's going to be a nice dinner coming from it, too. Now, for herbs and spices, I'm going to be using black pepper, Italian seasoning, and even though I have onions, uh, fresh onions, I'm going to be using some onion powder as well. Let's get this black pepper here. This is Italian seasoning, by the way. All right, now this is the finished product before putting it in the oven. Looks all right, right? So let's get this in the oven, 425 degrees for 18 minutes. Woo! This oven has been on for a little while and this oven is so nice and toasty it's the warmest room in the house and I just want to stay in here all day now so while that pizza bakes in the oven I'm going to clean the kitchen up a little bit so my husband doesn't have a heart attack the smell of this pizza is driving me crazy I could never work in a pizza parlor because I would want to eat all day I can't wait until this thing is done out of the oven. I'll taste it with you and share some with you. All right, the pizza is done, so let me show you. Here we go, guys. I got a pan full of pizza. 
with dough made just with baking powder instead of yeast. Now I'm going to cut into this and taste some. Now, be aware again for cooking times that your oven might vary. You might need just 15 minutes, 16 minutes. I did 18 minutes, but it's always good to peek on your pizza if you're unsure or making something for the first time, especially. My husband is usually the pizza cutter at the house. He does it so quickly and so smoothly, and me, I always take forever. So let me get my piece on a plate now. Okay guys, here's my piece of pizza. Now, let me taste this. Hopefully I don't burn my mouth. Ready? Mm. That is really good. It's especially crunchy around the edges. Oh my goodness. I'll be having at least another piece of this for dinner. I know you big eaters out there and you men out there are like, um, I'll take at least four pieces of that, please. <laughs> but anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you use the recipe and that it helps you. If you would like to support my channel, I have um, PayPal links and Cash App links below the video. I'm also on Facebook on, and on Instagram and those links are below too. So I will see you guys again and thank you for being watchers and subscribers. I love you all.